20 years earlier, another ruthless killer had walked the streets of Chicago. He'd stabbed a 43-year-old to death in her home and left no clues. The police were baffled and thought it was a burglary gone wrong. But they were wrong. The killer went on to commit two more murders, one so brutal it stunned the nation. The killer was a mere 16 years old when he committed his first murder. William Hirons had been breaking into houses since the age of nine. His thefts were bizarre. The only thing he seemed interested in was women's underwear. On the morning of the 5th of June, 1945, Hirons left home for work. He was on holiday from school at the time and had a job, but instead of going straight to work in the center of Chicago, he meandered about, looking for a place to rob. On Kenmore Avenue, he walked into a residential building and soon found an apartment door open. Inside, Josephine Ross was asleep. When she heard the intruder, she screamed. Hiron stabbed her to death, washed her body in the bathroom, returned her to the blood-soaked bed and cleaned up the apartment. Three months later, Hiron started at Chicago University, where he lived on campus during the week and went home at the weekend. Before long, he'd begun prowling the streets again, looking for places to rob and attacking more women. He was getting bolder. In December, he entered a hotel room through an open window. As Hiron searched the room, 30-year-old Frances Brown emerged from the bathroom. Hiron shot her twice and plunged a bread knife through her neck. She was found the following morning, slumped over the bath. It soon became apparent to police that this killing had the same hallmarks as that of Josephine Ross. Both bodies had been washed and the apartment wiped clean. But this time, Hirons left a fingerprint on the bathroom door and a bizarre message scrawled with red lipstick. For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Unfortunately, William Hirons was not caught and went on to commit another murder less than a month later. In January 1946, Hirons was again wandering the streets of Chicago and found himself in Kenmore Avenue, the scene of his first murder. There, he climbed into a house through a window and entered the bedroom of six-year-old Suzanne Degnan, the daughter of a Chicago lawyer and his wife. When Suzanne stirred, Hirons grabbed her by the throat and throttled her. He then carried her corpse outside and slipped into the basement washroom of a nearby house, where he dismembered her body, stuffed it into several bags, and threw them down separate manhole covers. In a bizarre attempt to confuse the police, Hirons then scribbled a ransom note and tossed it back through the little girl's bedroom window. Suzanne was soon reported missing, a hundred policemen scoured the area looking for her. At 5 p.m. on the 7th of January, the first of her remains was retrieved from the sewer. Chicago was shocked by the horrific and senseless murder. But it was another six months before Hirons was arrested when he was caught by an off-duty policeman after trying to escape from yet another apartment he'd broken into. From that point on, forensic evidence sealed the case against Hirons. A fingerprint on Suzanne's ransom note matched a print found on Francis Brown's bathroom door. In August 1947, Hirons confessed to all the crimes. He was sentenced to three consecutive life terms.
William Hirons has served the longest sentence in the history of Illinois. In 1967, he earned a degree, becoming the first Illinois prisoner to graduate. The horrific crimes committed by John Christie, Richard Speck and William Hirons seemed to be motiveless, with the killers showing their victims no mercy or compassion. 